so this is the simple network topology and you can see that we have the overlapping subnet 10 10 10 0 slash 24 one behind the pf sense firewall another one behind the 40 gate firewall and our intention is to make sure the communication is happening between these two overlapping subnet through the vpn side to side tunnel between the pf sense firewall and the 40 gate firewall so the 40 gate firewall will be using 2.2.2.0 slash 24 subnet for the translation for the bi-directional NAT and on the pfSense firewall we will be using 1.1.1.0 slash 24 for the translation purpose for the bi-directional NAT from within the subnet to the outside world and from the outside world to inside the network so let's um, get started with the 40 gate firewall and if you are interested in uh, knowing about the configuration on the pf sense firewall you can uh, check out my last video where i have covered all the basic requirement on the pf sense firewall along with the complete configuration and on the 40 gate firewall before we uh, start the session um, the 10.10.10.0 slash 24 subnet will be using 2.2.2.0 slash 24 subnet for the source net as well as the destination net. For example, 10.10.10.1 will get translated to 2.2.2.1 and the last IP 10.10.10.254 will get translated to 2.2.2.254 while doing the source net and for the destination NAT when somebody is trying to reach out to this particular subnet which is inside uh, which is behind the 40 gate firewall will be using the external IP which is 2.2.2.1 until 2.2.2.254 which will get translated on the 40 gate firewall and then will be translated back to the actual uh, source which is 10.10.10.0 24 and this will be achieved using the virtual IP object which will allow us to do the bi-directional NAT on the 40 gate firewall. So let's get started. So this is the uh, PFSense firewall and you can see the IP address on the WAN interface 14140.40.109 LAN 2 10, 10, 10, 5, as per the diagram on the 40 gate firewall we have port 2 and port 3 port 2 is the WAN interface with an IP of 14140.40.108 and port 3 which connects the internal subnet is having an IP of 10.10.10.6.24 let us verify the same you can see on my screen port 1 so port 1 is the management port port 2 is the WAN port with an IP of 14140.40.108 and port 3 is having an IP of 10.10.10.6.24 and we do have the secondary IP configured on port 3 for the testing purpose and secondary IP is 10.10.10.5.24 which is overlapping the IP on LAN2 on PFSense firewall 10.10.10.5 slash 24. So on 40 gate firewall we have port 3 with 10.10.10.6 and 10.10.10.5 slash 24 which is overlapping with the PFSense uh, LAN2 interface IP. So uh, let's get started. I already have the configuration in place on the pfSense firewall so we can uh, refer the proposal for phase 1 and phase 2 and we can create the VPN tunnel on 40 gate firewall so let's get started click on VPN click on IPsec tunnel click on create new and name it as FGPF click on custom next let's try to configure the VPN tunnel so we are going to use the static IP address 
remote IP is 14.140.40.109 you can refer the diagram I'll share the link for the diagram in the description interface is going to be port 2 this is going to be main mode NAT traversal I have enabled TPD is on demand Appreciate key is password same as what we have configured on the PF Sense firewall Ike version 1 mode is main proposal is AES 128 SHA-256 group 2 AES 128 SHA-256 group 2 lifetime is 86400 Exoth is disabled. Let us try to configure phase 2. So on the 48 firewall, the local subnet will be 2.2.2.0 slash 24 and remote subnet is going to be 1.1.1.0 slash 24, which will act as a proxy ID because the natting will take place before the traffic gets onto the tunnel and reaches the other end. So make sure you update the local subnet as 2.2.2.0 slash 24 and remote subnet as 1.1.1.0 slash 24. Click on advance, match the proposal configured. So you can see here we are using ESP protocol with AES128, SHA-256. PFS is not configured. AES128, SHA-256. Lifetime is in seconds, 43200. Click OK and our VPN tunnel is configured. Policy and objects, click on virtual IP to create the virtual object, name it as Binat. I'm going to keep it as any, which gives me the flexibility of using this Binat on multiple interfaces. Type is static NAT, external IP is going to be, or the subnet is going to be one, sorry, 2.2.2.1 and 2.2.2.254, considering the last IP as the broadcast IP and the internal subnet mapping is going to be 10.10.10.1 and the last IP will be automatically updated click on OK to create the virtual IP object. So now we have the virtual IP object for the translation in both the direction for source NAT and the destination NAT. Let's try to create the firewall policy to allow the traffic from inside to outside and from outside to inside on the IPsec tunnel. So now we will be configuring the allow traffic on VPN for the incoming traffic. So the traffic will be on the tunnel interface, which is FGPF in our case. Destination is going to be port 3, source is going to be all. 
and destination here you will have to select the binat object or the virtual ip object that you will be creating that will take care of the destination translation service is going to be all you can always configure the policy as per your requirement make sure you have natting disable unless this is particularly required this will do the source natting for the traffic so i do not need that i'll disable that click ok so now this is the allow traffic for the ipsec let's try to create the reverse policy from inside to outside Incoming interface is going to be port 3, outgoing interface is going to be the tunnel interface, source is going to be all, destination is again going to be all in my case, well again you can have the granularity here to control the traffic, service is going to be all and make sure you select the action accept, inspection mode flow base and make sure you enable the natting here and you can use either of the option here outgoing interface address or the dynamic ip pool so if you have this particular option disabled then the firewall will not be able to check the virtual uh, ip object created for the bidirectional nat so make sure you have this particular op option enabled and let it be any option here the firewall will try to check the mapping before doing the NAT and will make sure that the virtual IP object is used for the source NAT as well even though you have uh, selected the outgoing interface address for the NATing purpose. Click OK. So now we have both the policy in place to allow the traffic from outside to inside and from inside to outside on the IPsec tunnel. Let's try to create the static route for the remote subnet which is the external subnet 1.1.1.0 slash 24 and this traffic will be on to the ipsec tunnel on the 40 gate click ok to save the route so now everything is in place let's try to check the connectivity from the lan to interface with an ip 10 10 10 5 on the pf sense firewall towards the port 3 10 10 10 6 slash 24 so this is my pf sense firewall so to reach out to the 10 10 10 6 configured on the 40 gate firewall port 3 you will have to use the external ip 2.2.2.6 and at the same time what i can do is i can have a sniffer configured on the tunnel interface to capture the traffic and you can see here i'm able to reach out to the remote subnet or the ip 10.10.10.6 using the external ip 2.2.2.6 and you can confirm that using the data from the sniffer on the tunnel interface so this is the incoming traffic because the pf sense firewall will translate 10 10 10 5 to 1.1.1.5 1 .1 1 so we see the source as 1.1.1.5 towards 2.2.2.6 and this 2.2.2.6 reply and we can check the session details as well So this is the session information, source is 1.1.1.5 towards 2.2.2.6 which will get translated to 10.10.10.6 .10 and 10.10.10.6 will reply back to 1.1.1.5. So that basically proves that the translation is properly working on our tunnel interface. So we have another IP configured on port 3 which is the secondary IP with an IP of 10, 10, 10, 5, exactly overlapping the IP configured on LAN 2, 10, 10, 10, 5, 24 on PF sense firewall. 
So let us try to reach out to 10.10.10.5, that's 24 on port 3 using external IP 2.2.2.5. So you can see here 1.1.1.5, the source from pfSense towards 2.2.2.5, which gets translated to 10.10.10.5, and the reply packet. So let us try to check the connectivity towards the IP in the network so i have a server which is having an ip 10 10 10 1 behind the 40 gate firewall let's try to check the connectivity for the same so to reach out to 10 10 10 dot 1 you will have to use the external ip 2.2.2.1 .2 .2 .2 on the pfsense firewall and you can see here i'm able to reach out to the remote server this is the remote server behind the 40 gate and you can see the traffic coming from the pfSense towards the actual server behind 40 gate. And one more thing what we can check to confirm that the traffic is reaching the 40 gate firewall where our tunnel interface is by checking our counters for the VPN so this is the encryption counter this is the decryption counter you can see the decrypted packet encrypted packet and we can initiate some traffic to recheck that so this will increment by 10 You can see here this code incremented by 10 packet decrypted packet encrypted so that basically proves that the traffic is hitting the tunnel interface and one more thing what we can check is the translation on the pfSense firewall so you can see here the translation 1.1.1.5 source translation for 10.10.10.5 on the pfSense firewall before it leaves the pfSense firewall towards 2.2.2.1 so that is again one more thing what you can check along with the status of the IPsec which gives you the information about the packet out packet in and you can basically confirm the counters again and match the counter again So let's try to check the counter again. So you can see here packet in packet out exactly matching the counter on the 40 gate because there is no packet loss. So again, a proof that the packet is hitting the tunnel interface. Let's try to initiate some traffic from the server behind the 40 gate firewall. Make sure that the connectivity is bi-directional so you can see here i'm trying to reach out to 10.10.10.5 slash 24 using 1.1.1.5 slash 24 subnet or the ip on pfSense and i'm able to reach out to the remote ip configured on lan 2 interface So this is the session information for the traffic that we initiated from the server behind the 40 gate. 10, 10, 10, 1 is the source IP towards 1.1.1.5 and this 10.10.10.1 is translated to 2.2.2.1 on the 40 gate firewall before it leaves the 40 gate and the reply packet. And the same you can check on the tunnel interface on the pfSense firewall and you can see here that the source is 2.2.2.1 exactly how we see on the 
forty gate firewall. So this is getting translated two dot two dot two dot one. Source is two dot two dot two dot one towards one dot one dot one dot five. So this particular one dot one dot one dot five is getting translated to ten 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 five, and the reply packet. One more thing, what you can check here is the SPI value. You can match this SPI value against the value that you have on the 40 gate firewall just to confirm that the packet is hitting the correct uh, tunnel interface so you can see the decryption spi and the encryption spi exactly matching the pf sensor spi values for the vpn that we have configured So that is all about the configuration part. So again, you can check uh, various information, for example, the state table. To make sure the translation is happening. So let's try to check the state table and see what we have so this is the state table for the traffic initiated from behind the 40 gate firewall 2.2.2.1 towards 10 10 10 5 which is exactly mapped to 1.1.1.5 so this is the destination translation so again a good source of view so good source for checking the translation and you can obviously check the status of the IPsec here So for the source translation, again, we will be checking the entry. You can see here on IPsec tunnel, there is a translation going on 1.1.1.5 for 10.10.10.5. 10, 10, 10, this is the source NAT for the traffic initiated from behind the PF Sense firewall. So that's all in this particular video. If you have any question, do leave them in the comment section. I'll try to answer them and Please do not forget to subscribe to the channel, hit the like button. See you in the next video.